um, pin. Okay, so nakikita niyo na class yung presentation natin. So yung kahapon ng mga participants na hindi nakakuha or hindi nakaabot sa explanation natin or discussion natin sa institutional or non-institutional uh, correction, of course, you can go back again doon sa ating um, telegram. So doon natin pinapost yung mga video na kailangan ninyo. Of course, sa uh, later part, uh, ipapost rin natin sa, sa drive so para maano ninyo. So hindi na natin ipo-post ano ah, sa YouTube yung ating uh, discussion so para exclusively kayo lang yung pwedeng makapag-access noon. Okay? So let's continue class with our discussion kahapon under the non-institutional correction. Of course, nagen tayo sa parole supervision. Okay? So pag-uusapan natin ngayon yung tinatawag natin na termination of parole supervision. Okay? So kailan ba mate-terminate yung parole supervision na tinatawag natin. Of course, uh, with the submission of summary report. So, meaning, after the expiration of the maximum sentence of parolee, the probation and, of course, the parole officer concerned shall submit uh, to the board yung tinatawag natin na summary report on his supervision of a parolee. So, kung pwede ba siyang i-release na sa tinatawag natin na parole. Again, so yan yung tinatawag natin na uh, termination of parole supervision. Of course, kailangan rin ng clearances class from police, court, prosecutor's office, and barangay officials. Kailangan ma-attach yan sa summary report. Okay? So, pag sinabi kasi natin termination of parole supervision, so kailan mag-determinate or kailan mag-stop yung kanatawag natin na parole supervision. So, meaning na pwede na siyang i-release sa parole. Okay? So, yan. Then of course, kailangan niya, before siya ma-release class, kailangan mag-issue ng Certificate of Final uh, Release and Discharge o yung CFRD na tinatawag natin. So again, Certificate of Final Release and Discharge kapag uh, napasa na yung tinatawag natin na Summary Report. Of course, with the recommendation of the Chief uh, Probation and Parole Officer that a uh, parolee has substantially complied with all the conditions of his release document issued to a parolee certificate of final release and discharge. Kapag nakomplan yun na lahat ng requirements and conditions, yung uh, tinatawag natin na ilalabas nila na, na, na papel, of course, that is the CFRD or the Certificate of Final Release and Discharge. Okay? So, yan. Yeah. Then, of course, we have the effect of Certificate of Final Release and Discharge. So, ano ba yung epekto ng pag-release ng tinatawag natin na Certificate of Final Release and Discharge? Ibig sabihin, the parolee finally released and discharged from the conditions appearing in his uh, release and documents. Ibig sabihin, yung um, tao na yun is finally released. Doon, wala na siya. So, yan yung tinatawag natin. He, he is not under already with the uh, parole supervision. But then, however, the accessory penalties of the law which have not been explicitly remitted therein shall be uh, shall be subsessed. Okay? So, sabihin, uh, yung uh, civil liability, yung mga damages, hindi, or uh, kailangan na pa rin bayaran kung meron. Okay? So, yan. Yeah. Of course, kay, meron tayong tanatawag na different uh, definition terms na dapat ninyong uh, i-comply uh, or yung tinatawag natin na uh, i-observe. Of course, pag sinabi natin board, of course, it talks about the BPP or the boards of uh, pardon and parole. Again, pag sinabi natin board, that is, uh, it refers to the boards of pardon and parole or the BPP. So, of course, yung, uh, sorry, of course, ang director naman, it talks about the director of Bureau of Corrections. Then, of course, uh, we have the uh, parole. It refers to the conditional release of a prisoner from correctional institution class after he served the minimum of his prison sentence. So, yan yung conditions before ka or before you will be eligible to apply or to be released from prison 
true parole. Kailangan mo muna ma-serve yung uh, uh, minimum of your prison sentence. Not maximum, ha? dapat minimum. Then we have the uh, parole supervision. Ang parole supervision naman class, that is the uh, surveillance by probation and parole officer of a parolee. So simply, pag sinabi natin uh, parole supervision class, it is the relationship of the uh, parolee and of course the uh, probation or parole officer. So or yung tinatawag rin natin na supervision. Of course, ang parolee class that is a uh, prisoner who is released on parole. So parolee ang tawag natin dyan. So again, a prisoner who is released for parole, that is parolee. Then of course, ang penal superintendent, yan yung officer in charge of the new believed prison, the correctional institution for women, and the prison and penal farms of the Bureau of Corrections. So ang tawag natin dyan is penal superintendent. Okay, so yan yung under sa... CIW, sa NBP, and of course, yung mga person and penal farms, particularly class sa Bureau of Correction. So, penal superintendent ang tawag natin. Kasi pagdating sa jail, ang tawag naman natin doon is uh, warden. Okay? So, yan. Then, of course, we have the uh, probation and parole officer. Sila yung uh, nag-undertake or sila yung in-charge for the uh, supervision of the parolee. Then, of course, ang uh, regional director is refers to the head of the parole and, and administration and, of course, in the respective uh, jurisdiction, whether it is a city, municipality, or respectively region. Then, ang release document class, before siya ma-release or before niya ma-comply lahat ng requirements and, of course, yung um, assessment. So, yun yung binibigay nila, yung release document, which is also known as the discharge on parole. Ibig sabihin, yung uh, tinatawag na na certificate of final release and discharge. So, yan yung release document. Then, of course, ang warden, tama yung sinabi ko kanina, it refers to the officer in charge of the provincial, city, municipal, or district jail. Kasi kapag sa, ano naman, kapag sa ward, uh, kapag sa tinatawag na na Bureau of Corrections, ang pag-uusapan natin, ang tawag naman natin doon is uh, superintendent. Kapag sa jail, whether it is a city, provincial, or municipal jails, of course, ang may jurisdiction dyan, or ang may karapatan, or ang in-charge is what we call the warden. Okay? Si warden yung in-charge natin dyan. Okay? Then, of course, uh, aside from that, let's uh, define, of course, sama rin ito class, ha, kasi na-explain na natin ito kahapon. Of course, pag sinabi natin uh, probation class, yan yung tinatawag natin ngayon na judicial clemency since ang uh, probation, it is given by the trial court or by the trial court, of course, class, through the power of judge, wherein a defendant or a person after the court has uh, sentenced or convicted him with the uh, particular crime, he will be released to the uh, conditions imposed by the court. Ibig sabihin siya, siya i-release i release sa ngayon class sa community kung saan siya nanggaling. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na probation. Sino ang nagbibigay kay ng probation? Of course, the trial court judge. Okay? Or the trial court. Kapag sinabi natin class na ang probation is a judicial clemency kasi ang nagbibigay is the court. So, ano naman ang tawag natin ngayon class sa tinatawag natin na parol? Again, Ang probation, it is also known as the uh, judicial clemency since it is given by the court. How about naman class ang tinatawag natin na parole? Okay, anong tawag naman natin? Anong kind of clemency is that? Sige nga, ilagay nyo sa comment section. Anong tawag natin na clemency ang tinatawag natin na parole? Kasi na-discuss ko na ito sa isang live ko. Kung hindi nyo napanood. Okay, so dapat ha, may nakakuha administrative clemency. Okay, very good. Ang tawag natin class sa parole, hindi executive clemency. Ha? Kasi again, ang mga executive clemency na matatawag lang natin, those are pardon, amnesty, we have reprieve, commutation of sentence. So ang tawag natin sa parole class, tama yan, yung sinabi ni, ni Val at ni, of course, yung ibang ano, students ko. Okay, tama yan. So ang tawag natin dyan class is administrative clemency Kasi nga, it is given by the agency or the boards of pardons and parole. So that's why 
Ang tawag natin sa sa parole, it is a uh, administrative clemency while ang probation naman, that is the judicial clemency. Nakuha niyo? Nakuha ba class? Nakuha ba? Or kayo nyo lang nalaman yung administrative clemency? Saan nyo nalaman yun, class? Tayo, sir. Okay. Sa akin pala, patay. Akala ko sa, sa iba. Okay, so again, pag sinabi nating uh, parole that it is administrative clemency, ang probation that is judicial clemency. Of course, ang ginagrant ni President, yan naman yung tawag natin ngayon na executive clemency. Yan yung ginagrant ni uh, President kasi it is the sole responsibility and power of the President to grant what they call the executive clemencies. Okay, next. Okay, ang petitioner naman class, ang tawag naman natin sa, sa tao na yan, yung uh, person na nag-file ng application for probation, ang tawag natin dyan is petitioner. Kapag uh, it is granted by the court class, kapag na-approve na yan ng korte, and of course, uh, you will be placed on probation. Ibig sabihin, pinahilin uh, pinahin taluta man yun uh, uh, medyo mahirap ako kasi mag uh, ano mag Filipino so again ipinahalin yeah. natin pinahalin tulutan parang ganon so basta it is uh, given or ibig sabihin it is granted by the court na that person will be placed on probation so ayan yan yung tinatawag na na probationer so again kapag nag apply ka pa lang class for application for or on the application of probation ang tawag sa iyo is petitioner. Ang tawag naman sa iyo kapag uh, yung korte, ibig sabihin, it is granted, you will be placed under probation. Ang tawag sa iyo is probationer. Tandaan niyo class, again, ha, dapat magaling kayo sa mga definition of terms kasi again, 80% ng lumalabas sa board exam natin is uh, naka-based yan sa terminology. So, please uh, improve your comprehension please improve your um, of course yung uh, reading comprehension talaga very important yan okay so dapat ninyong malaman na of course 80% so dapat marami kang na memorize ano ba yung meaning ng petitioner ano ba yung definition ng probationer and so on okay okay of course meron tayong tinatawag na probation officer of course yung uh, probation officer class siya yung mag introduce or siya yung magbibigay ng referral for probation or any uh, probationer class. Of course, it is yung uh, trabaho rin ng mga probation officer is to um, determine or to supervise class yung mga person na nandoon under the uh, probation. So, ayan, of course, when it comes sa probation, medyo ano lang naman yan, medyo tawag nito. Uh, hindi naman everyday dapat mag, uh, mag-report sa probation officer. Of course, merong uh, ano lang, twice a month or once a month and so on, depending on the case na meron yung tinatawag natin na probation. Okay. Okay, so let's proceed. Of course, ang trial court class, it talks about under or yung uh, tinutukoy niyan is the regional trial court or the RTC of the province or city municipal court which has jurisdiction over the case, yung tinatawag natin na probation. Okay, so yung trial court natin. Then we have the probation office. Of course, office natin, whether it is a provincial or city probation office, of course, to conduct investigation, or depending on the referral, kung sino yung uh, kailangan talaga. Then, of course, ang probation of, uh, order, yan yung order of the trial court gan granting yung hinihingi ng tinatawag natin na defendant to apply for probation. So, kapag nag-grant yan ng korte, yan yung ilalabas nila yung probation order. Take note, in the application of probation, once it is granted or once it is denied, that is not appealable. Hindi mo yan pwedeng i-appeal akas yung probation order or yung result ng probation natin. Okay. 
So wait na uh, mag-change ako ng position kasi medyo ano dito. Okay. Okay. So, ganun kasi. So, as a uh, reviewer, yung tanatawag natin na as a summary, pag sinabi natin probation, of course, the individual will not uh, serve his sentence to the prison cells or sa kulungan or sa selda. Isiserve niya ngayon yung uh, kaso niya or yung kanyang sentence siya sa tanatawag natin na community kung saan siya nanggaling. Then, of course, mamumuhay siya ng parang normal na tao. Of course, uh, there are conditions set forth by the law na dapat niyang sundin. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na non-institutional correction. So, yung iba na hindi nakaabot, of course, you can go back again sa ating discussion mamaya. Okay? So, sa ating discussion, uh, yung live natin na to. Okay, next. Okay, so, of course, uh, let's proceed now to the last uh, subject in... Uh, correctional administration, which is the therapeutic modalities. Okay, so let's proceed with the uh, therapeutic modalities. So yun yung TOS niya class. Ito yung TOS or Table of Specifications ng tinatawag natin na therapeutic modalities. Okay, so ito. Okay, so dito tayo class. So sasagot kayo. Then of course, uh, please make sure sa dapat 36 or yung nasa online natin Lahat magpa-participate yan kasi nga i-try uh, natin or i-improve natin yung analyzation ninyo. Sorry. Again, do not answer kapag hindi ko pa natapos yung question. Kasi mangyayari sa board exam class, hindi pa nagsa-start or hindi pa nagbibigay ng uh, instruction yung uh, inyong uh, tinatawag natin uh, na, na, na proctor, kayo naman nagsusulat na. So, wait na nga. I-change natin. I'm not comfortable. So, of course, dapat ha, make sure na hindi kayo magsusulat agad-agad. Uh, same as true with this uh, online natin. So, basahin nyo muna ang question twice. Read the suggested answer. And, of course, answer once. Kasi very important yung answer once. Kasi do not change or erase your answer. Kasi it will be marked wrong anyway in the board exam. Okay, so I will read the question twice and then of course yung suggested answer. So it is the law that defines persons uh, or deprived of liberty or the PDL, a detainee, inmate, or prisoners, or to other person under confinement of custody in any other manner. Letter A, R810575. Letter B, R810576. Letter C, R810577. And letter D, R810578. Pwede ko. It is the law Okay, that defined persons uh, deprived of liberty, or a detainee, inmate, or prisoner, or another person under confinement or custody in any other manner. Okay, so you can start answering now. Ayan. Okay, so let's see kung nakuha ninyo yung tamang sagot. So ang sagot natin dyan, that is Republic Act 10575. Okay, so that is the law that defined person deprived of liberty or yung tinatawag natin na uh, PDL. Okay, so another question naman. So the rules provide 
uh, or states that which uh, yung ulitin natin na ulitin natin. So these rules provide that states with detailed uh, guidelines for protecting the rights of the persons deprived of their liberty from pre-trial detainees to sentence prisoners. So ulitin natin. These rules provide states with detailed uh, guidelines for protecting the rights of a person deprived of their liberty from pre-trial detainees to sentence prisoners. Letter A, Nelson Mandela Rules. Letter B, United Country Rules. Letter C, Bangkok Rules. And letter D, the United Nations Rules for Treatment of Women Prisoners. Okay, you can start answering now. Okay, so ayan. So please make sure ah, uh, uh, ano niyo, i-check muna ninyo class kung tama yung mga sagot niyo. Okay, so let's see kung tama yung sagot ninyo. So ang sagot natin dyan, class, that is what we call the Nelson Mandela Rules. Of course, alam na alam yan, yung Nelson Mandela Rules, yan yung rules class na binibigyan ng protection or yung rights of the persons deprived of liberty, yung tinatawag natin na PDL. Of course, from pre-trial hanggang sa sentence prisoners. Of course, i-make sure natin, na walang uh, paglabag, of course, yung kanilang uh, inhumane. Dapat iwasan yung uh, grabe yung punishment na ibibigay sa kanila or yung inhumane punishment that is not allowed or yung tinatawag rin natin na excessive penalties as provided by law. So ang tawag natin yan is the Nelson Mandela Rules. Okay, how about this one, class? Okay, so this is also known as the Nelson Mandela Rules or yung one two, two Rules. Letter A, the United Nations Minimum Rules for the Treatment of Prisoners. Basahin niyo ulit ha. Letter B, the, treat, the United Nations Rules for Treatment of Women Prisoners and Non-Custodial Measures for Women Offenders. Letter C, the United Nations Rules for Prisoners. And Letter D, the United Nations Rules for Children Prisoners. Ulitin natin. This is also known as the Nelson Mandela Rules, Rules 122 class. Please answer. And ang question niya, class, uh, under the Nelson Mandela rules, ano yung specifically yung rules 122 natin?
Okay, so ayan. So ang sagot, so majority ng sumagot is uh, letter A. So ang sagot natin dyan, yung tanatawag natin na Nelson Mandela Rules under 122. Of course, ang sagot natin dyan, class, hindi na letter A. Ah. Ang sagot na ako. Okay, so again, letter A. So the United Nations uh, na, na prang kayo. Minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners. Okay, how about this one? Okay. So dito tayo class explain natin one by one. So again, so we have the basic principles of Nelson Mandela rules. Number one, kailangan yung lahat ng prisoners class should be treated equally and of course with respect and of course uh, depending on the inherent dignity and value as a human being. So yan yung sinasabi ni uh, Nelson Mandela. So the present rules shall be applied impartially. So ibig sabihin walang kinikilingan. And of course, uh, there shall not be a discrimination class when it comes a gray, as a race, color, sex, language, religion, political, or other opinion, whether it is national or social origin, property, birth, or any status. It is the religious beliefs and moral precepts of prisoners shall be respected. So under yan sa United Nations on, of course, yung sa drugs and so on. So yan yung basic principles of the Nelson Mandela rules. Ibig sabihin, the prisoner uh, prisoner should be treat, uh, treated with respect uh, based on the inherent dignity and the value as a human beings okay okay dito matayo ay sorry okay so of course imprisonment and other means that result in cutting off the persons from outside world are, in, are are selected by the very fact of taking from this person or the right self uh, discrimination or determination by depriving their liberty. So yan of course. So the purpose of imprisonment or similar measures class are primarily to protect society against crime and reduce recidivism. So again, ang pinaka purpose ng imprisonment natin class ilagay yung tao na yon sa kulungan para maprotektahan natin class ang tinatawag natin na society from a uh, possible threat or a risk na ma-impose nila sa ating community. So yun yung purpose ng imprisonment natin class or yung mga PDL natin ikukulong kasi that's why persons deprived of liberty. So ang uh, purpose niyan is to protect the society against the crime or yung criminality natin and of course yung uh, ma-reduce yung recidivism or yung uh, repetition ng pag-commit pag ng tinatawag natin na crime. Okay? So, yan yung purpose ng imprisonment natin. Okay. So, the prison regime okay, should uh, seek to uh, minimize any differences between uh, prison life and, of course, yung uh, life at liberty that tend to lessen the responsibility of prisoner due to their uh, dignity as a human beings. Na ulit na to class ah. So ayan, of course uh, there are different uh, adjustment na kailangan na protektahan rin ng state class. Of course, you make sure ng state na maganda yung facilities or maganda yung sa loob ng kanilang uh, tinutuluyan to make sure that they are the, they are physically and of course mentally uh, stable, okay, away from disabilities. And of course, yung tinatawag natin na mga discomfort sa loob. So yan yung prison administration. Okay, next. Okay, dito tayo class. So this is also known as the Bangkok Rules or 70 Rules. Ulitin natin. This is also known as the Bangkok Rules or 70 Rules. Letter A, the United Nations Minimum Rules for the Treatment of Prisoners. Letter B, the United Nations Rules for treatment of women prisoners and non-custodial measures for women. Letter C, the United Nations Rules for Prisoners. And letter D, the United Nations Rules for Children Prisoners. Okay, your timer starts now. Okay, so ayan. Uh, 
Okay, so 'di ba? So ang daming uh, nagme-message kasi class uh, since uh, ano, so mga thousand siguro yung na-receive ko na <laughs> na messages yung nagta-thank you. So, oh, 'di ba? So very positive yung result ng mga ng board exam natin. Kasi nga, of course sa mga videos na pinopost natin, and of course yung sa mga live discussion na makikita ninyo sa ano dati. So nakatulong talaga sa kanila. So majority ng followers natin class, pumasa talaga sila. Okay, so that's why ang daming uh, Okay, so kung uh, ano dito, yung um papasasalamat. Okay, so ganun. Okay, so ang sagot natin diyan that is Okay, ang sagot natin diyan that is letter B. So that is the United Nations rules for treatment of women prisoners and non-custodial measures for uh, women offenders. So yan yung tinatawag natin. Okay, yan yung tinatawag natin class na the Bangkok rules. Okay? So that is the United Nations rules for treatment of women prisoners and non-custodial measures for women offenders. Kasi nga the they should be treated or kailangan at uh, iyan yun sila i-handle of course with the uh, respect and of course yung uh, tinatawag natin na ano siya, handle with care kasi women yung hinahanda natin under the bank of rules. Okay, next. So, according to the World Health Organization or the WHO in 2002, it is defined as a set of intervention designed to optimize functioning and reduce disability in individuals with health conditions in interaction with their environment. Letter A, rehabilitation. Letter B, reformation. Letter C, retribution. And letter D, restoration. Okay, so what is your answer on the comment box? May sumagot ng restoration, may sumagot ng retribution, and so on. Sige. Ano yung sagot pa ninyo, class? Okay, so lahat class ha, ng uh, participants natin sumagod. Reformation. Sige, titingnan natin class. Of course, ang sagot natin dyan class, that is what we call the rehabilitation. Again, it is defined as the set of intervention designed to optimize functioning and reduce disability in individuals with health conditions in interaction with their environment. So yan yung tanatawag natin na rehabilitation. Ibig sabihin, 
marireform sila class or mababaguhin sila Ibig sabihin, pinaprepare sila sa community kung saan sila nang galing. Of course, uh, kasi nga maapektuhan rin yung tinatawag natin na immediate environment or yung mga conditions na nakapa, nakapalibot sa kanila. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na rehabilitation. So, baka yung pag nila ng crime, baka na, nalihis lang yung landas nila or baka hindi naman nila talaga sinasadya pero kailangan lang talaga ng uh, konting uh, tune-up So para masabi natin na yung uh, person is uh, a new law abiding citizen na kapag bumalik siya sa community. Okay? So ang sagot natin diyan that is rehabilitation. Okay? So balikan niyo mamaya class after this live or at after this discussion natin. Okay, next. Uh, bakit tayo tumaas? Okay. So it is an environment that keeps people get help while helping others. Again, it is an environment that uh, keep people uh, to get help while helping others. It is actually a treatment environment. The interaction of its members are designed to the therapeutic within the context of the norms that require for each to play the dual role of a client and therapist. Again, it is the environment that helps people get help while helping others. So it is a treatment environment wherein the interaction of its members are designed to be therapeutic within the context of the norms that require for each to play the dual role of a client therapist. Letter A, therapeutic community. Letter B, therapeutic community modality. Letter C, therapeutic center. And letter D, therapeutic community center. Okay, you can start answering. Okay, sige, keep on answering. Bakit 18 lang yung sumasagot class? Okay, so 22. Okay, therapeutic community, TC. So ang sagot natin dyan, class, that is letter A. That is therapeutic community. So again, so it is an environment, of course, that is the therapeutic community. Ang sagot natin, that is letter A. So mamaya explain natin kung bakit ganun ang sagot niya. Of course, dito tayo. So this is a self-help social learning treatment model used for clients with problems of drug abuse and other behavioral problems such as alcoholism, uh, stealing, and other, other antisocial tendency. So it provides dynamic mutual self-help environments in which residents transmit or reinforce one another's acceptance of and conformity with the highly structured and stringent expectations of the community. Again, This is a self-help uh, social learning treatment model used for clients with problems of drug abuse and other behavioral problems such as alcoholism, uh, stealing, and other social antisocial tendencies. So it provides dynamic mutual self-help environment which a residents transmit or reinforce one, uh, one another's acceptance of and conformity with the highly structured and stringent Uh, expectation of the community. Okay, what is your answer on the comment section, class? B.
Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, Therapeutic Community Center. Iba-iba yung sagot ninyo, class, ha? Okay, so sino nga ba yung may tamang sagot? Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, that is uh, letter A, therapeutic community pa rin. Okay, so therapeutic community letter A pa rin ang sagot natin dyan. So that is a letter A. Ay, of course, okay, magkamali tayo dito class. Okay, so mali pala yung nalagyan ko. So ang sagot palaga natin dito is therapeutic community modality kasi yun yung tinatawag natin na model. Okay, so treatment model. Okay, kapag plain lang, kapag hindi nabanggit si model class, ang sagot niya doon is therapeutic community. Kapag nabanggit si model or treatment model, that is what we call therapeutic community modality. Actually, ang sagot class, nandyan na sa question mismo. Kaya ang student, akala nila tama sila. Yun pala, nandun na oh, treatment model, so that is letter B, so therapeutic community modality. Bakit may sumagot ng Therapeutic Community Center at other choices? Uh, okay lang yan. So, i-explain natin mamaya one by one. Okay, dito tayo. So, the following are activities in Therapeutic Community Modality exam. Again, the following are activities in Therapeutic Community Modality exam. Letter A, Individual and Group Counseling. Letter B, Moral, spiritual values formation, letter C, vocational livelihood and skills training, and letter D, community intervention program. Okay, sige. Ang sagot natin dyan, walang, walang D kaya A. <laughs> Merong D, na, natanggal lang yung ano. Natanggal lang yung letter. Okay, so may D dito, class A, dito. Letter D. Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, that is letter D. Community Intervention Program. Okay, so hindi yan siya kasali, class A. Yung uh, Community Intervention Program is uh, hindi kasali sa tinatawag natin na therapeutic community modality. Of course, under sa community modality natin or therapeutic community model, uh, yung individual and group counseling, so para ma-assess yung mga pangangailangan nila, kung ano ba talaga yung dinadamdam nila, kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ng isang uh, individual or yung tinatawag natin na client. Then of course, yung moral, spiritual, and values formation is very important naman para ma-reform talaga sila or ma-prepare kung ano yung values na dapat nilang uh, ma-acquire or kailangan na ano yung values na dapat nilang uh, uh, ma-project para of course uh, madali yung pag-heal nila sa mga, nakasa mga kasalanan na nagawa nila. So that is yung moral, spiritual, and values formation. Of course, tuturuan nila sila ng vocational livelihood and skills training para again, kapag as they go back to community, kung nakalaya na talaga sila, kung na-release na talaga sila, of course, ready na sila. Halimbawa, may idea na sila kung ano yung business na ipuputap nila. Meron na silang skills, halimbawa, sa agriculture, sa industrial, okay? So, and so on. So, na, pwede lang pagkit, uh, pagkitaan or pagkakakitaan during or after the uh, release ng tao na yon sa tinatawag natin na community. Okay? So that is community 
intervention program is not included under the community model program. Okay, so ito kasi class, yung mga community model program na sakop ngayon ng tinatawag natin na community uh, modality or therapeutic community modality. Of course, meron tayong tinatawag na individual and group counseling. Yan yung kinagamit natin class. Pakinggan yung class ha. It assists the clients in trying to sort out their problems. Of course, para ma-identify kung ano yung problema nila. Pero of course, mahanapan rin natin ng solution class. Then, uh, reconcile conflicts and help uh, resolve them. So, para ma-acknowledge nila na meron talagang problema. So, yan yung, pro yung purpose ng tinatawag natin na individual and group counseling para ma-assist natin ang clients to voice out their problems and of course, to assist them to identify or to provide immediate solution to the problem. Then, kailangan din natin ng uh, moral, spiritual, and values formation. So, of course, kailangan natin ng uh, seminars, lectures, or training offered or arranged by the designated agency uh, comprise their rehabilitation activities. Kailangan din ng work or job placement or referral uh, system natin Ibig sabihin, i-refer ngayon sila sa yung uh, normal na work class or outside of the uh, the counseling. Uh, of course, kailangan natin to contact information or magbibigay ng information sa labas. Of course, uh, i-make sure rin na walang discrimination na mangyayari. Then, uh, of course, nandiyan na niyan yung vocational livelihood and skills training. And of course, yung mga training classes to help the clients earn extra income. Okay. Then, of course, uh, may support sila sa family nila outside of the prison cells. Then, nandiyan rin ang, of course, yung health, mental, and medical services to address the basic need of clients and their families. Okay? So, yan ang pinaprovide natin under the therapeutic community. Then, of course, merong literacy and education naman kapag sa mga tao or yung mga tao na yun under sa therapeutic community na no, re no read, no right. Of course, to uh, to make them become functionally literate. Ibig sabihin, alam na nila magbasa at magsulat. So, of course, yung community service, uh, kailangan na silang tuluan how to render or how to give yung uh, tanatawag natin na community service. Of course, sa community natin to the benefit or for the benefit of the society. So, magkakaroon sila ng community involvement, of course, by participating on the different community services na ino-offer ng ating uh, government or state. And of course, number eight, client self-help uh, organization. And of course, yung mga cooperatives and client association as an economic group to venture on a small-scale project with their collaborations. Then of course, yung payment of civil liability. So, kailangan i-instill or i-remind palagi yung ating uh, mga clients of their responsibility and consequences of the harm they inflicted to others. Yan yung payment of civil liability. Okay? Okay, so of course, dapat ma-instill ma sa utak nila na dapat kailangan nilang bayaran yung nagawa or whatever consequence ng crime na nagawa nila. So that is the payment of civil liability. Okay, next, we have the environment and of course, the ecology awareness programs. Then, of course, tuturuan sila on how to preserve the uh, ecological balance and environmental health or how uh, and how them uh, how they were able to uh, preserve yung tanatawa na tanang ecological preservation or yung environment preservation. And, of course, yung sports and physical fitness. It enhances the physical well-being of clients, friendly competition of clients, of course, yung mga sectors, together with the officers, provide an enjoyable and helpful respite all relationship. So, so sports and physical fitness. Okay, so dito tayo class. Okay, please uh, dito kayo mag-focus. Meron tayong tinatawag na therapeutic modality. So, of course, iba yung tinatawag natin na view for. Iba rin sa BGMP at of course yung uh, PPA or Parole and Probation Administration. So, pag sinabi natin BGMP class, kapag pupunta tayo sa BGMP ngayon, ang tawag sa kanila class is Therapeutic uh, therapeutic Community Modality Program or T... Uh, isulat na lang dito. Okay. So, i-annotate natin. So, tandaan niyo class, uh, tandaan niyo pag uh, dating sa BGMP, ang tawag sa kanila 
is a Therapeutic Community Modality Program or TCMP. Okay, so yan yung tanatawag natin sa BJMP. So ayan, Therapeutic Community Modality Program. Pag sinabi naman natin class sa View 4, pagpapunta tayo sa View 4, ang tawag naman sa kanila ngayon is na Therapeutic Community uh, Program. Ang tawag sa kanila is Therapeutic Center or TC. Then pagdating naman sa pa, uh, Probation and Parole Administration, ang tawag naman sa kanila ngayon is Therapeutic Community. Okay, or ano lang, uh, what they call Therapeutic Community rin or TC. So ang nagkaiba lang dito si uh, BJMP, meron silang tinatawag na Therapeutic Community Modality Program. While sa view core and of course the PPA, ay sorry, sorry class. Ang TC pala dito sa Bureau of Correction that stands for uh, Therapeutic Center. Okay, Therapeutic Center. While yung isa naman dito na TC that stands for Therapeutic Community. Ulitin ko ha, kasi uh, hindi ito natuturo sa ibang ano eh. So, meron, uh, kami lang actually yung may presentation na ganito. Okay. So, kasi na nakuha to during the convention ng therapeutic modality sa Manila. So, selected lang yung class. So, walang nakakalam nito kay galing talaga to sa view for at BGMP. So, again, tandaan ninyo, yung uh, tinatawag natin na therapeutic modalities, pagdating sa BGMP, ang tawag natin dyan is Therapeutic Community Modality Program or the TCMP. Pagdating naman sa view for Therapeutic Center and of course pagdating sa PPA naman, ang tawag natin dyan is Therapeutic Community while yung uh, view for Center ito naman is program. So nakuha niyo ba? Nasundan niyo? Nasundan niyo class? So again, again dapat i-ano niyo ay familiarize pag BGMP, TCMP, Therapeutic Community Modality Program sa view for naman ang tawag doon, Therapeutic uh, Center or the IC and of course sa PPA ang tawag naman is Therapeutic Community or the NIC. Nakuha niyo? Nakuha ba? Okay. So mamaya, explain natin one by one. Okay. Okay, dito tayo, class. So uh, wait lang ha. Ang annotation pala. I-clear natin. So ano nga ba, class, ang tinatawag natin na TC? So pag sinabi natin therapeutic community class, it is environment that helps people get help while helping others. So again, pag sinabi natin therapeutic community, uh, it helps people get help while helping others. So that is therapeutic community. Of course, it is also a treatment environment. The interaction of its members are designed to be therapeutic within the context of the norms that are required for each to play the dual role of the client and therapist. So that's why kanina nagkamali tayo doon kasi hindi nyo talaga alam yung definition ng uh, therapeutic community. So again, so kailangan merong uh, client and of course merong therapist para of course ang purpose ng therapeutic community is ma-heal sa class doon sa pagkakasala niya or doon sa crime na na-commit niya. So yan yung purpose ng therapeutic community. Then of course, Pag sinabi natin self-help social learning treatment or the uh, SH, uh, SLT, meron tayong tanatawag na self-help and the social learning treatment or the under the therapeutic community. So for sa self-help, magkakaroon ng individualized treatment based on their needs or based on their preference, depende so on sa na-evaluate ng officer natin. Then of course, helping your own self. Ikaw mismo yung mag-address or mag-determine ng existing problem para naman matulungan mo yung sarili mo sa pagbabago or any changes na, mamangy na mangyayari sa inyo. Of course, paano? Of course, pagkaroon ng uh, dyan ay apply class ngayon ang social learning treatment or the SLP. So yan yung uh, self-help social learning treatment. Okay, so uh, dyan na papasok ang social learning treatment uh, or the TC. Then under sa self-help social learning treatment, Nandiyan si behavioral aspect, intellectual aspect, vocational, of course, yung uh, mga livelihood, uh, whether it is agriculture, whether it is, whether it is industrial, and of course, yung emotional aspect of the uh, client. So, yan. The self-help and of course, the, the social learning treatment. Okay? So, yan ang under the therapeutic modalities. 
Okay, so who are client? Okay, sino yung sinasabi natin or sino yung tinatawag natin class ngayon na client? Okay, sino yung tinatawag natin na client? Okay, from the resident or yung resident na tinat... Okay, so again. So again, so who are client? So tandaan niyo class, yung uh, resident or client, of course, yan yung tawag natin class pagdating ngayon sa therapeutic community. Again, sa so pagdating sa therapeutic community class, ang tawag natin sa ano is resident or client. So kailan naman o saan naman natin class ginagamit si PDL? Sa ang term ngayon ginagamit si PDL kasi sinabi ko sa therapeutic community ang ginagamit natin is client or resident. So, saan naman natin ngayon ginagamit si PDL or the persons deprived of liberty? Okay, sige. So again, ang tanong ko class, saan natin ginagamit si PDL? Hmm? Nakalimutan nyo na? Nakalimutan nyo na saan ginagamit si PDL? Jail, prison? Okay, so very good. Okay, of course, si, uh, si uh, person deprived of liberty sa uh, pwedeng sa BGMP or sa Bureau of uh, Correction or sa prison natin. So again, yan yung tawag natin class. Pagdating sa Bureau of Jail Management, uh, sa BGMP and the BU4, of course, ang tawag natin class is uh, the PDL or the Persons Deprived of Liberty. Pagdating sa subject na therapeutic community, ang tawag na natin sa kanya class is uh, pwedeng na resident or resident or client. Nakuha ba ninyo? Nakuha ba? So again, nakuha ba? Nakuha niyo? Yes, sir. Okay, so ayan. So may 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 aso na nagano diyan. <laughs> okay, so explain natin one by one. So meron tayong tinatawag dito na rehabilitation and client. Okay, rehabilitation and client. Again, class, huwag kayo maniwala doon na pinalitan na daw ang persons deprived of liberty ay yung mga yung ex-convict or yung criminal kapag after niya ma-serve ang uh, kaso niya sa correction, okay? So ang tawag daw sa kanila is GOPI. Uh, narinig ko yun eh, may nagtanong na isa, may nag-message sa akin, eh, yung sabi nila GOPI or the uh, graduated or graduate of penal institution. That is wrong class. Tinanong ko yung mga authors ng uh, correction na books, of course, mga kasamahan ko sa, as a national lecturer. Then of course, uh, mga students ko before sa BGMP and the BU4. So walang ganon. Walang nilabas na memorandum ang Bureau of Correction at BGMP. Okay na pinalitan na yung tinatawag natin na graduate of penal institution kasi nga wala yan ta sa hindi yun pwede. So again, so graduate of penal institution hindi yan uh, uh inilabas ng Bureau of Correction or Bureau of Correction. So hindi tayo pwedeng ano klasa ah uh, do not uh, wag na nating complicate yung board exam. Okay, kung doon lang tayo uh, inmates. Okay, so ayan. Okay, so again, walang uh, graduate of penal institution kasi ang graduate of penal institution, there is only a, uh, what we call, a layman's term. Gawa-gawa lang yan ng tao class. Hindi yan siya totally or hindi talaga yan siya na-instill na or hindi yan talaga na-established ng uh, U4 or the uh, Bureau of uh, what we call the uh, BJMP. So, wag kayong, maano, wag kayong maniwala. Okay, so again class, uh, okay na tayo. Of course, ang uh, rehabilitation to eliminate future criminal behavior. So meaning, hindi na siya or iniwasan natin na hindi na siya magkaroon o hindi na siya ulit mag-commit ng another crime in the future. So yan yung uh, purpose ng rehabilitation. And of course, ang client, of course, yung uh, 
uh, useful na siya class pagdating niya sa community kung saan siya nang galing. So yan yung mga tinatawag natin na na client, whether resident client or of course yung mga PDF. Okay, so dito tayo class explain natin. So ano nga ba yung itsura ng tinatawag natin na TC? Okay, so ayan. So dito tayo, pag sinabi nating uh, therapeutic community class, of course, um, it is the task of the residents working under staff supervision. So again, ang tawag natin, whether clients or the resident. Okay, so of course, yung mga house services, uh, cooking, cleaning, kitchen service, uh, minor repair, apprentices and running all departments, conducting meetings and peer encounter groups. So yan lang yung mga... ginagawa nila. Of course, the therapeutic community operates in a similar fashion to a functional family with hierarchical uh, structure of older and younger members. So meaning, each member has a defined role and responsibilities to sustain proper functioning under the therapeutic community. Ibig sabihin, may nakaset or meron silang roles na dapat uh, gampanan class each and every one of them. Best of course, uh, from older to younger members. And of course, there are a set of rules and community norms that members of an entry commit to live and uphold. So, dapat meron silang sinumpuang uh, salaysay or sinumpuang pangako para ma-uphold yung tinatawag natin na um, therapeutic community. Okay? So, yan yung, yung itsura ng tinatawag natin na therapeutic community. Okay. So, pag sinabi natin uh, therapeutic community, ano yung vision ng therapeutic community? Of course, uh, ano lang natin itong klasa, babasahin kasi uh, self-understandable naman to siya. Okay, so of course, uh, by the end of this decade, ang therapeutic community daw shall have become the corporate culture of the Parole and Probation Administration or the PPA, uh, permitting its plans, programs, and practices, and confirming its status as a model component of the Philippine Correctional Uh, system kasi yung uh, therapeutic community natin class under yan siya sa tinatawag natin na parole and probation administration or the PPA. Then of course what its mission? Ano yung mission naman ng therapeutic community? Ano ang purpose niyan is to uh, ano natin na? Uh, is to promote human and social transformation among our clients and among ourselves. So yan yung uh, tinatawag natin na mission ng therapeutic community. So actually, ang cardinal rules class ng therapeutic community is bawal yung drugs, no violence or threat of violence, no sexual acting, and no stealing. So everything that an officer does is meant to erase yung mga street behavior and to lead them or yung offender natin to be committed the right of living. Kung ano yung tama class. So meaning, uh, yung landas o nadalihis, so iti-check niyan or i-correct niyan through the therapeutic community program or model. While the therapeutic community, yan yung tool or yung means na ginagamit ng mga administrators natin class. Lumabas to sa ACCR, sa mga classmate ko na passer ngayon. Ah, wow. Nicer. Okay. So baka, ano to? Baka magamit nyo to class. Okay. So again, So again, ang therapeutic community class, yan yung tool or yan yung ways and means na ginagamit ng administration class to prepare the client for reintegration to the community as a reform, rehabilitated, productive, drug-free, and law-abiding citizen or law-abiding person. So yan yung purpose ng therapeutic community class para kapag they go back to the community, they are reformed, rehabilitated, productive, drug-free, and the law, new abiding citizen. Ibig sabihin, naiwasan na or wala na yung possibility na magkukumit na naman sila ng another crime or another uh, another felony. So yan yung tinatawag natin na therapeutic community. Okay? So to prepare the client for reintegration to the community. Nakuha ba? Nakuha class? Okay. So okay lang ba yung discussion natin?
Yes, sir. Okay lang po. Okay, sige. Let's continue. Okay, so dito tayo. So actually, class, yung uh, yung mga lecturer or yung mga ibang speaker, naghahanap sila ng um, yung file sa pagdating sa therapeutic uh, modality. So actually, hindi ko pa ito binibigay. Kasi nga, syempre, uh, kami yung naghirap nito. So dapat, ano lang, uh, so ano lang, of course, kayo yung maka-access nito sa akin kasi ibibigay ko tong presentation, make sure class, ha, na hindi nyo ito isi-share sa iba kasi uh, may nakita ko sa ibang university and schools and ibang review center nakita ko doon na pinapublish nila yung aking mga presentation at mga files alam na alam ko kasi may palatandaan yung mga files ko so make sure na ano ninyo sa, sa inyo lang of course that's why hindi na ako nag-upload sa YouTube yung press yung ating uh, yung ating recorded para may iwasan yung ganon okay so kasi yung ibang naka-enroll dito, may umalis na dalawa kasi sa, baka sa, sa, sa isip nila, ina-upload ko naman sa YouTube bakit pa sila mag-enroll. Okay, so ang ginawa ko, syempre, hindi na ako mag-upload doon kasi para kayo na lang yung focus ko sa inyo, yung information sa inyo yan. So ang nakikita ninyo na sa Facebook natin, of course, uh, for ano yan, for general, sa lahat pwede silang mga ano dyan, pwede silang, pwede nilang panuurin yan lahat, pero yung sa inyo, separate naman yan. Detailed yun sa atin. Comprehensive. Okay. So again, this phase of BGMP therapeutic modality program that the resident is now ready to undergo Okay. So this is a phase of BGMP's therapeutic uh, modality program. The resident is now ready to undergo the proper treatment. So he becomes a part of the community starting as a crew member of the housekeeping department until he gradually ascends in the hierarchy. Uh, A, phase 1. B, phase 2. Letter C, phase 3. And letter D, phase 4. Okay. Sige nga, kung alam nyo to. Or, uh, naano nyo ba to, Klaus? Na-encounter nyo na? Or hindi pa? Or hindi na-discuss sa inyo during undergrad? Sige, sagutin nyo lang. Okay, so again, anong phase 2? Okay, so again, ang sagot natin dyan, that is a phase 2. Okay, very good. So ayan, alam nyo naman pala, so wala natin problema. Okay, sige, ang sagot natin dyan, of course, phase 2. So next question tayo. Okay, so i-explain natin, class, yung phases under the uh, therapeutic community modality. So of course, ang phase 1 natin dyan, Yan yung tanatawag klase natin class na entry or the orientation uh, phase. Of course, uh, once the PDL is committed to jail, he undergoes a series of examination to determine his physical, social, and psychological status. So upon his commitment, a resident is placed on the orientation under class sa reception and diagnostic room or orientation room. In here, he is acquainted or acquainted with the TC program under the BGMP or the TCMP manual. Okay, so yan yung uh, orientation. So para ma-inform siya class 
on the series of examination na pagdadaanan niya. Then of course, nandyan yung mga roles and norms of the community, uh, the uh, therapeutic community concept, written and unwritten philosophy, the staff and the members of the community, the tools of the house, the job functions, and the therapeutic community hierarchy. He or she is assigned to the static group and uh, as a big brother who will provide him with support and will walk him through the orientation phase. Ayan. So at, the, at this phase, the resident is handled gently and is expected to commit mistakes in the process of learning the program. So sanctions of negative behavior are usually light with emphasis on teaching. Okay, so again, uh, as a summary, ang phase 1 class, of course, yan yung tanatawag natin na orientation phase or entry phase. Uh, meaning, so magkakaroon ng orientation doon sa DRD or the Directorate for Reception uh, Diagnostic Room para ma-inform siya kung ano, kung paano nag-acquaint or paano nagpa-function yung ating uh, therapeutic community program. Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na therapeutic orientation phase. Okay? Next, we have the phase 2. Okay? Meron tayong tinatawag na phase 2 class. Yan yung primary treatment. So, after the proper orientation class ng tinatawag natin kanina, yung entry or your, your orientation phase natin. So, the resident class is now ready to undergo the proper treatment. Okay, so the resident now is ready to undergo the proper treatment. So he will become now a part of the community starting as a crew member of the housekeeping department. Again, magsa-start siya dito sa primary treatment class as a crew member of the housekeeping department until he actually ascends in the hierarchy or tumaas yung kanyang uh, roles and of course yung functions niya. Then of course he must be knowledgeable on the following. Of course yung proper use of tools, managing own feelings and learning how to express oneself appropriately, learning how to follow the rules and norms of the community, maximize participation activities that are appropriate for the resident's need for growth, learning for how to trust the environment, develop positive coping skills to deal with difficult situation, Enhancing educational and vocational skills to make him productive. And of course, improve social skills and recognize the importance of people's, uh, of course, yung help nila in shaping environment. So yung primary class, uh, basically, yung resident is now ready to undergo the proper treatment. He will be started as a crew member of the housekeeping department under dito sa primary treatment natin. Then dito tayo ngayon sa pre-entry. Ang pre-entry class it is the stage to have internalized the TC values and concept to start life afresh. However, in the jail setting where entry and release are not within the jail control, the residents may not have reached this phase of treatment before they even leave the jail facility. So, ayan. So, yan yung tanatawag natin na pre-re-entry. Ibig sabihin, okay, so... Yan yung uh, tinatawag natin na pre-re-entry. So meaning, regardless of the resident let of stay, he is expected to undergo this phase prior to the release into society. Okay? So yan yung muna pagdadaanan niya, class, before siya talaga officially ma-release sa ating society. Then of course, to rebuild social and family ties, uh, going up ladder, so hierarchical showing leadership, ibig sabihin meron na siyang discipline and meron na siyang authority within himself. So, pwede na siya maging leader. Realization of his potential to become productive members of society and of course, yung mapping out of plans. So again, under the pre-re-entry, so ayan, the jail or the resident class is expected now to have internalized or na-realize na yung values and concept how to start life afresh. Okay? So yan yung re or pre-re-entry natin. Okay. Then of course, we have the phase 4 or yung tinatawag natin na re-entry. So of course, in the ideal, ideal setting, a, a resident at this stage is now ready class to be released back to the society because he demonstrated adequate self-control and discipline. Ibig sabihin, nakitaan na siya na meron na siyang self-control or meron na siyang control sa sarili niya and disciplina. So meaning, he is now ready to be released back to the society. Then of course, uh, in that phase, 
the resident or the inmate is now preparing for his life outside of the jail and is focused on making himself a productive citizen. Again, he is now focused on making himself a productive citizen. So he may start planning for a job hunting and rebuilding family ties and of course, relationship. So yan yung purpose ng re-entry program natin. Of course, babalik na siya sa tinatawag natin na community kung saan siya nang galing. Of course, nabukulit lang yan. So, ayan. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na re-entry class. So, yan yung last phase ng tinatawag natin na therapeutic uh, modality or community. Of course, yung uh, ano natin, ito yung BJMP therapeutic community philosophy natin. So, ayan. Uh, basahin nyo yan mamaya ah, kasi hindi na natin i-discuss yan kasi hindi naman talaga siya lumalabas. So, of course, dapat you, you are familiar with this. Okay, I am here because there is no refuge finally for myself until I confront myself in the eyes and hearts of others. I am running until I suffer them to share my secrets. I have to, uh, no safety from them. Afraid to be known. I can uh, know neither, neither myself nor any other and so on. So, yan yung BJMP Therapeutic Community Philosophy. Okay, so yan class. Of course, uh, familiarize yourself with that. Of course, mag-end muna tayo dito mamaya class then para mag, mag kumain muna kayo ng mga 30 minutes then babalik tayo after. So we have the, para matapos natin ang therapeutic community. So we have the cardinal rules class in the BGMP therapeutic community. So of course, ah uh, yung following or primary rules na dapat yung sundin, bawal ang uh, sex or sexual acting or uh, sexual acting out, no drugs or alcohol the violence or threat of violence, and of course, bawal na bawal yung stealing. Okay? So, yan yung uh, cardinal rules na dapat sundin under the BGMP community or therapeutic community natin class. Okay? So, I hope marami kayong nakuha na bago or may, may nakuha kayong learning at this, uh, ano, mabalik tayo class uh, after ninyo kumain, mga 30 minutes. Uh, okay? Pa, babalik tayo kahit mga 1 hour lang. Okay, so para matapos natin ang therapeutic community, then of course, uh, ready na tayo sa ibang area rin. Okay, so thank you everyone. Soon. Okay, thank you for reminding. Okay, ulit na natin. So i-share screen po. Okay, so ayan, let's continue. Okay, so what is your answer? Uh, the, sh the, show. the show. Okay, so ayan. Okay, so ang sagot ninyo, letter C. So how about others class? Okay, so magot kayo, please. Okay, so how can we ensure that the inmates are completely incapacitated? Very basic question class. Of course, ang sagot natin dyan, that is letter A, safekeeping. Again, so bakit sumagot kayo ng letter C class? Again, tanong niya, how can we ensure that inmates are completely incapacitated? Ibig sabihin, how can we make sure na safe yung community or society sa tinatawag natin na inmates. Of course, kailangan natin sila ikulong. Safe keeping of the national PDLs or the person deprived of liberties. Nakuha niyo? Nakuha niyo? So again, ang sagot natin dyan class is uh, what we call safe keeping. So again, let's go back again sa basic. Di ba kagabi? Na-explain ko yung tinatawag natin na uh, uh, classification of course yung mga uh, purpose ng penalty natin. Yung safekeeping, ibig sabihin, we are preventing the person or any individual for a uh, commission of the crime or makapost ng danger or makapagbigay ng danger sa community or society natin. Okay? Safekeeping of the national uh, PDLs or the person deprived of liberty. Okay, so dito tayo class, yung mandates of the Bureau of Corrections. Of course, ang uh, safekeeping of the national PDLs Yan yung mandate ng uh, National Bureau of Investigation or National uh, of Bureau of Correction rather or the BUCOR. Of course, ang mga national corrections natin or yung BUCOR natin, yung mga crimes na nakumit nila class is three years up. 
kasi uh, three years below, that is the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. So, ayan. So, uh, kung titingnan ninyo, so, self-understandable naman yung tinatawag natin na uh, function ng uh, Bureau of Correction. Okay? Of course, naka-base pa rin yan, class, yung uh, standards based on the United Nations uh, Standards Minimum Rules for Treatment of Prisoners. And of course, yung uh, Nelson Mandela Rules and so on. So, yan yung mga mandates ng Bureau of Correction, pag sinabi natin safekeeping of national offenders, ibig sabihin to ensure that the inmates is uh, or the society is protected. So yan, yung safekeeping ang kailangan natin. Plus. Okay, so again, plus ang mga sagot ha, nasa question na mismo. Of course, ang security of national inmates class, of course, kailangan natin ng proper custody, implementation of prison laws and regulations they could prevention of prison violence and crimes and efficient recovery of uh, fugitives or fugitives na tinatawag natin. Of course, kailangan natin uh, i-make sure rin yung proper custody nila. Of course, uh, to, uh, to make sure that they are properly or completely incapacitated so that they cannot uh, escape from the prison cells. Yan yung purpose ng security of national inmates. Then we have the reformation of national inmates. Of course, uh, there are reformation programs na effective class as a treatment for mga behavior ng mga inmates. Ano ba yung mga destructive behaviors and other personality disorders of the inmates. So tanda niyo, so the circumstantial reformation programs will be institutionalized by new core of course para sa ating mga inmates. So yung reformation na tinatawag natin Yan yung mga pagdadaanan or mga programs or activities na pagdadaanan ng isang inmates para ma-reform siya or ma-prepare siya as they go back to the community. <clears throat> then of course, ang moral and spiritual program natin. Uh, of course, uh, hindi lang yan uh, physical ang pinapangalaan natin. Of course, pati moral and of course yung spiritual formation of an inmates. Of course, ang uh, in charge na uh, department is the DSWD or uh, DMSW, or the District um, or Municipal uh, Social Welfare. Then, of course, ang Education and Training Program, meron tayong... Uh, ah, wait lang. Nakatabunan pala ito. Okay. So, meron tayong tinatawag na Education and Training Program class. Of course, merong uh, formal and non-formal education and skills development of an inmates. Uh, wherein yung in charge is yung Directorate for Education Training, yung DET natin. Of course, may mga volunteer professor, teachers, instructors, and trainers shall be regulated and managed by the Department or Directorate for Education and Training, so or DET. Then, of course, we have the Work and Livelihood uh, Program. So, to make sure na meron silang uh, uh, trabaho or meron silang idea after they go back or after, after nila makalabas sa ating mga prison cells. Of course, with the participation ng mga, mga non-governmental organization or yung tinatawag uh, natin. Okay, so mga NGO. Okay, you are muted. Okay, so ayan. So naririnig nyo ba akong class? Paki, ano ba? Paki-confirm uh, kung naririnig nyo pa ako. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Sige. Sige. Okay, of course, we have the sports and recreation program class. Of course, di ba, na-explain na na ko na kanina as early na, of course, may mga sports activities, badminton, basketball. Of course, yan yung panatalit na sports and recreational program para ma-establish din yung relationship nila class with each other. So, yan yung purpose ng sports and rehabilitation program. Of course, yung health and welfare Yes, uh, uh, Abu Bakar, sir? Sir, nag-stop po ata yung slides po. Nandun pa rin po tayo sa tanong na yung sa safekeeping of national PDNs. Ay, nag-stop. Uh, wait Hindi... lang. Yan ako na lang. I-ulitin uh, ko ang share screen. Thank you for ano. Uh -huh. O, oh, dito. Ayan. Uh, nakita na? 
Yes po sir, yes po. Okay, so ayan. Thank you class. Sasabihan niyo ako class kapag hindi niyo makita. Baka ako lang yung nakakita tapos <laughs> continue pa rin ako sa pagsasalita. So thank you. Of course, yung health and welfare program class to ensure yung proper nutrition, hygiene, sanitation, and cleanliness and promotion of good health to inmates. Of course class, kung napapansin niyo in real McCoy on or in reality, grabe talaga yung sitwasyon ng ating mga jail facilities and what we call prison facilities uh, nationwide. Of course, when it comes, kahit sabihin natin na ito yung standard, hindi pa rin yan nasusunod. Okay? Um, of course, wala tayong magagawa dyan. So, so, baka hopefully, mga next decade, so ma-improve na yan yung ating uh, prison system. Then of course, yung behavior modification natin to ensure yung changes na may changes sa character uh, formation ng ating mga inmates. Of course, yung uh, para maging uh, makipaghalubido rin class or ma-establish nila yung interpersonal relationship in the prison community. Kung habang uh, nag heal sila or habang nagbabago sila class under that therapeutic community program. So, yan yung behavior modification. Okay. Next. So, of course, uh, next question. It is the policy making and the strategy formulating body in the planning and formulation of policies and programs on drug prevention and control. Okay, dapat natin makatama dito. Ha? Letter A, PDEA. Letter B, DDB. Letter C, DLG. And letter D, the PNP. Okay, what is your answer? Again, sinabi niya, it is the policy-making body. Okay, may nakita pa rin akong maling sagot. Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, okay, very, ano to class, very basic to under Republic Act 9165. Okay, so very basic to class, bakit marami nagkamali dito? So hindi ba ito naturo? Ang sagot natin class, kapag tinanong policy making and strategy formulating body, of course, ang sagot natin dyan, that is the uh, Dangerous Drug Board or the DDB. Again, tas ha, under Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act of 2002, yung DDB, that is the Policy Making and Strategy Formulating Body. Ibig sabihin, sila yung nagka-crack, sila yung nagpo-formulate ng strategy on how to combat yung tinatawag na na drug prevention. Of course, ang PIDEA or the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, sila yung tinatawag na na implementing arm of the Dangerous Drug Board. Ibig sabihin, yung mga plans and strategies na na-formulate or na-craft ng DDB or the Dangerous Drug Board, ang uh, mag-implement nun or ang mag-enforce nun is the PIDEA. Again, under the Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act of 2002, ang policy making and strategy formulating body is what they call the Dangerous Drug Board or the DDB. While the PIDEA or the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency that is the implementing arm of the Dangerous Drug Board wherein sila yung nag-enforce, sila yung nag-apply ng strategy and planning or yung plans na na-formulate ng Dangerous Drug Board in relation to the uh, policies on uh, drug prevention and control in the country. Nakuha niyo Again, ang PIDEA, implementing arm of the Dangerous Drug Board, ang DDB, the Policy Making and Strategy Formulating Body of the Government or the State. Nakuha ba? So dapat wala na, wala na magkamali dyan, class. Uh, very basic question yan, class. Pero marami pa rin nagkamali. So, so dapat natin ma-check talaga yan. Okay. So I hope na uh, wala na kayong or hindi nyo na yan. Pag ma-encounter nyo yan, hindi na kayong mag-second thoughts sa sagot ninyo. May nakita ko kanilang pulis. O oh, ba So parang malayo yon So okay lang sana sa PIDEA and PDDB. But still, uh, of course, Kahit mali yung sagot yung class, okay lang yan. Para pagdating sa board exam, tama na. So, yun yung mas importante. Ang palagi mo sinasabi, uh, do not aim for the correct answer, aim for the lesson na makuha ninyo or strategy na makuha ninyo pagdating ng board exam. Okay? So, ayan. 
Okay, dito tayo class. Of course, ang Dangerous Drug Board class and the Republic Act 9165 uh, of 2002, Section 77, nakalagay dyan, it is the policy making and strategy formulating body, the planning and formulation of policies and programs on drug prevention and control. Okay, so ayan ka sa, hindi ko ginagawa-gawa yung mga tanong, pinabas yan mismo sa board exam. Okay, so yan. Of course, uh, dito tayo class. Okay. So one of the drug treatment modalities of the Dangerous Drug Board where it aims to treat patients with chemical dependency, endorsing a set of values and beliefs about the powerless of people over drug taking. Letter A, edetic approach. Letter B, Hasalden or Minnesota, bottle use. Letter C, multidisciplinary team approach. And letter D, therapeutic community approach views. Okay, what is your answer? You are familiar with this class or not? Okay, ay bakit <laughs> nasagutan ko na? Sorry. Ah, uh, mabuti. Uh, nakita niyo ba? <laughs> Uh, siguro okay lang kasi you are not familiar with this. Okay, so okay lang. Okay, so ayan. Nakita sir. Okay. So ayan nakita. So pero wala pa rin nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Ha? Bakit ang ang sagot niyo letter D, therapeutic community approach views. Okay, ang sagot natin diyan is letter B. Okay? So that is uh Hasselden or Minnesota model views. Again, it is uh, one of the treatment modalities of the Dangerous Drug Board that aims to treat patients with chemical dependency halimbawa yung sa drugs or endorsing a set of values and beliefs about the powerless of people over the drug taking or yung drug use na ginagamit natin. So that is Hasselden or Minnesota model use. Okay, so explain natin yung different modalities class na tinatawag natin. So we have the uh, multidisciplinary or multidisciplinary team approach naman. It is a method uh, in the treatment and rehabilitation of drug dependence which avails to the services and skills of a team composed of psychiatrists, psychology, social worker, uh, occupational therapist, and other, of course, the mga uh, disciplines in collaboration with the family and drug dependent para matreat talaga class or maiwasan yung paggamit ng droga, yung mga drug dependents na tinatawag natin. So para dahan-dahan class, uh, collaboration na ng mga psychiatrists, um, psychologists, and so on, as well as yung criminologist class to... Uh, yung mga drug dependents natin to rehabilitate them. Okay? So yan yung multidisciplinary kasi multi ibig sabihin combination of different uh, services and skills or team para to effect yung tinatawag natin na rehabilitation. Then we have the therapeutic community approach uh, views naman class. We have the therapeutic community uh, approach views. Ayan. So yan yung uh, ano natin to change the patient self-destructive thinking and behavioral pattern, and of course, to teach them uh, personal responsibility. So yan yung purpose ng therapeutic community uh, approach natin, to make them personally uh, responsible, to, uh, to create a positive uh, self-image, and of course, yung sense of human community, and of course, to uh, for growth and development of that person. So yan yung purpose ng therapeutic community approach Natin. Of course, to change their attitude, to change their behavior as uh, they play a significant part or role in the nation building. So, yan yung therapeutic community approach views natin. Then, we have the hassle then Minnesota Bureau of Views. Uh, sinasabi dito, the yung addiction as a disease. Of course, uh, it caused by um, large outside of person's control. Wala na yung uh, control class. 
Of course, yung uh, tinatawag natin, yung uh, about the powerlessness of people over drug trafficking, in, uh, turning into high power to help them combat the disease. So basically, yung hassle then uh, Minnesota moral abuse, yun yung tinatawag natin na addiction as a disease. Ibig sabihin, yung person is out of control, hindi niya na makontrol yung sarili niya. Ibig sabihin, he is powerless. Ibig sabihin, tinitake over siya kahit gusto niya magbago class. He is powerless over drug taking. Voluntary na lang na nag na nagtitake siya ngayon ng drugs. So that is hassle then Minnesota model views. Ang spiritual approach naman, of course, gagamitan natin ng Bible as the primary source of uh, inspiration to change. Of course, uh, it is uh, views of drug addiction as a sin and encourages the patient to turn away from it and renew their relationship with the Lord. So that is a uh, spiritual approach. Okay. Then of course, ang eclectic approach naman, of course, uh, it aims at applying a holistic approach in the rehabilitative uh, program. Ibig sabihin, yung uh, wholeness, ibig sabihin yung totality, yung tinitinglan dito under sa eclectic uh, approach. Ibig sabihin, more compassionate siya. Of course, dependent to address yung mga problems uh, towards the rehabilitation and uh, recovery ng tinatawag natin na uh, offender. So, under yan sa eclectic approach. Okay, dito naman tayo. So, it is the phase of therapeutic community ladderized program of the PPA where it is focus is to affect behavioral change and develop client initiative and self-discipline. Again, it is the phase of therapeutic community ladderized program of the PPA where it is focus is to affect behavioral change and develop client initiative and self-discipline. Okay, your timer starts now. Okay, so ayan. So let's uh, answer this uh, one. Okay, letter B, ang sagot ninyo, phase 2. Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, of course, that is letter B, primary treatment. Okay, very good. So that is letter B. Okay, next tayo. So of course, uh, we have the Therapeutic Community Ladderized Program or the TCLP. Of course, we have the uh, preparatory stage wherein, of course, yan yung... Uh, uh, nagko-correspond yung mga six-day uh, investigation period for petitioners for probation, parole, or executive uh, clemency. But then again, ang uh, titingnan natin dito class, yung phase one, of course, yung orientation. Okay? So sa orientation, of course, dito malalaman or pinapaintindi class yung uh, about sa program natin or yung therapeutic community program natin or ano yung hierarchy, yung structure ng therapeutic community family member. Yun yung sa orientation. Of course, dito sa primary treatment naman, yan yung, uh, yung uh, phase or yung stage naman to develop, ayan, to develop client initiative and self-discipline. So that's why ang sagot natin doon kanina is the primary treatment. Again, ang primary treatment class to develop client initiative and self-discipline. Okay? So yan yung phase 2 natin. Then dito naman sa phase 3 class, yun yung tinatawag natin na uh, immersion. Of course, it is the link between the phase 2 and the phase 4, yung tinatawag natin na treatment. Okay, so during this phase, yung clients will apply their learnings from phase 2 and are now internalizing that PC uh, percept and beliefs. So ayan, yung uh, clients now uh, become mature and responsible in daring to fulfill their duties to their families and community. Ibig sabihin, naka-realize na sila class under sa immersion na tinatawag natin. Then we have sa integration naman, of course, yung uh, 
yung phase ng reintegration ay yung ng integration naman class of course um yan yung uh, uh tawag nito nandiyan diyan na papasok actually yung tinatawag natin na uh, mga mga learnings na ano nila yung mga cell literacy yung mga skills yung mga livelihood ibig sabihin it uh, created uh, positive changes It, did, uh, it created class yung positive changes in behaviors and attitudes of the uh, person or the offender. So, yan yung sa integration natin. Okay, next tayo. Okay, and of course, uh, we have, of course, that the integration kanina. So, okay na yan. So, again, ang integration. So, uh, in-expect na, of course, uh, to behave them uh, to become a responsible member of the family, of the community. So, of course, uh, without the direct supervision of probation and parole officer, ibig sabihin, mapagkakatiwalaan na sila. Ibig sabihin, uh, it is expected na magbabago siya, uh, ayusin niya yung familia niya, and of course, makapagbigay siya ng contribution rin, not just sa familia niya, of course, sa community rin. So, yan yung integration natin. Okay, so we have the uh, therapeutic community overview. So, na-explain na natin to kanina class. So, naulit na actually. So, again, ang uh, rehabilitation to eliminate future criminal behavior, na-explain na natin. So, kasi nga, inulit ko lang para mas ma-retain talaga sa utak ninyo. Then, ang client, of course, it is useful na mapagdaanan niya yung rehabilitation class para ma-avoid natin ang recommission of the crime. So, yan, rehabilitation and client. Uh, okay, and of course, in the Philippine setting, it is started early as 1970s. Okay, yung sa drug abuse resistance uh, education at bikutan. So yan, nag-start yung tanatawag natin na therapeutic community class. Of course, hindi na natin uh, pumunta sa history kasi sa board exam class, hindi naman siya talaga nagtatanong sa history. So ang dapat nyo na malaman, yung stages, yung phases, ano yung tawag dito sa tao na to in uh, BGMP, Anong tawag natin sa view core and anong tawag natin pagdating sa parole and probation administration and any other agencies natin. Then of course, the TC implementing or correctional agencies natin. So ayan, uh, DOJ. So in 2020, so the DOJ PPA poll implementation and 2015, sa so ang GBM, BGMP naman noong 2015. Okay, so of course, yung silent uh, features ng uh, tinatawag natin na therapeutic community, ulitin natin. So the primary therapist and teacher is the community itself consisting of peers and staff who as a role model of a successful personal change, serve as a guidance in recovery process. Kasi di ba kanina, identify natin ang therapeutic community, it is a client-therapist uh, relationship. So yan yung community as the therapist. So we have the participation, tayo mismo. Of course, precept of right of living. Of course, uh, uh, truth, honesty, uh, personal responsibility, and of course, yung uh, good behavior. So nakalagay dyan, inner person is good, but behavior can be bad. Change is the only certainty, work ethics, self-reliance, and other uh, changes. So that is the percept or precepts of the light of living. Then, of course, uh, TC is a place where one can change and unfold. The group can foster change. Individual must take responsibilities, structure, accom uh, accommodate, and of course, yung motion na yun. Okay, of course, overall, ang purpose ng therapeutic community class is to foster change sa life ng offender natin. Okay, of course, yung five distinct categories of thesis natin. Of course, we have the relational or behavioral management, affective, emotional, psychological, cognitive, spiritual, psychomotor, and of course, uh, the, the, the TC Cardinal Rules class, tandaan nyo to, very important to, baka tanongin to class sa exemption. Ano ba? Uh, the following are the cardinal rules of therapeutic community, exempt. Okay? So again, ang uh, cardinal rules ng uh, TC natin, we have no drugs, No violence or threat of violence, no sexual acting out, and no stealing. Okay, yun yung TC Cardinal Rules natin. And of course, we have the theoretical foundation of therapeutic communication. Of course, uh, we have the Banduras Social Learning Theory. So nakalagay dyan, you alone can do it, but you cannot do it alone. Okay, 
use of positive peer pressure and role modeling. Okay, no man is an island. Then the psychoanalytical theory by Sigmund Freud, of course, uh, yung uh, id, ego, and superego. Then ang cognitive dissonance theory, going through the motion to achieve congruency. Then behavioral modifications, yung Sky Skinner's experiment naman, operant conditioning, coercion, reward, and punishment between the uh, strategy or between the, the choices, whether you choose reward or punishment. So yan yung tanatawag natin na behavior modification. Of course, may explain na natin yan, class, pagdating natin sa criminology area. Okay? So yun. Okay, so yung theories behind the TC class. Of course, uh, social bond theory by family dynamics, existential psychology, emphasis on here and now, universality of human condition, be on present. Then we have the humanistic psychology. It is empowering a person to help himself, believe in the basic goodness of man, kasi nga humanistic psychology. Then, trans-territorial model of change or yung Pocasca and Di Clemente, that is the process of change na tinatawag natin. So, yan ang tanda ninyo. Okay. So, of course, the major treatment components, uh, co component rather, cognitive, of course, ang cognitive class, it is the psychotherapy, of course, yung uh, speaking, psychotherapy, that teaches people strategies to identify and correct problematic behavior in order to enhance self-control, to stop drug use and address a range of other problems, ibig sabihin, kakausapin yung tao na yon para to stop or to encourage him or her to stop yung pag-use ng drugs. Then we have motivational interviewing is an evidence, of course, to, um, uh, changing their behavior and the focus on the goal-directed way or on the strategy or on the, the solution of the problem. Then, of course, community as a method, of course, yung uh, therapist or tayo mismo, it will serve as a therapist on the uh, attainment of the therapeutic goals and objectives or the therapeutic community na tinatawag natin. Okay. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na criminogenic needs class. I, uh, yun yung factor in offender's life that directly related to recidivism. Recidivism yung class. Ibig sabihin, so yung um, pag-commit ng crime or yung repetition of the commission of the crime, of course, yung mga low self-control, anti-social personality, anti-social values, substance abuse, and dysfunctional families, and so on. Of course, that is self-explanatory. Hindi na natin dapat i-expound yan. Criminogenic, yun yung mga related um, factors that will affect to the repetition of the crime or repetition of the commission of the crime. So yan yung criminogenic needs natin. And of course, uh, yan to assist yung tinatawag natin na risk factor and of course yung uh, tinatawag natin uh, to identify yung uh, criminal tendencies that cause criminality class in the community. Kung ano ba yung reason behind kung bakit nagkukumit siya ng crime, nagkukumit siya ng ganito. So that is the importance of criminogenic needs. Okay, uh, needs are evaluated in juvenile and adult offenders and in various settings such as jail, prison detention, correctional facilities, and community correctional facilities. Baka masyadong mainit or masyadong masikip. So that this will be uh, one of the criminogenic uh, needs or criminogenic factors na tinitingnan natin dito. Okay, so ayan. Uh, okay na yan. Uh, okay, so na, na, na ulit na to class. Okay, so ayan. So th this, there are two types class of criminogenic, uh, criminogenic risk factor. Yung, yung static and of course yung dynamic. So ayan, yung risk factors natin. Okay, so ang static class, ibig sabihin, those factors uh, that cannot be changed through any form of correctional treatment. So ayan. Uh, they are not the primary focus of the treatment. So, yan yung static. Wala na tayong magagawa dyan. So, yan yung status risk, uh, risk factors. Yung, of course, yung mga uh, wala na tayong magagawa class, of course, yung offender's uh, age at the first time of arrest, kapag matanda siya or masyadong bata, criminal history, growing up in a single right. household, and so on. So, yan yung mga static risk factors uh, na wala na magagawa, which is not the focus of the therapeutic community program. Okay, bakit? Ma-change ba na natin yung uh, yung age ng offender o yung nagawa niyang crime in the past? Hindi. Okay, so yan. Then we have 
of course, yung uh, dynamic risk factors na uh, tinatawag na natin class. The dynamic risk factor, it is the part of the offender's background and can be modified through uh, appropriate correctional treatment. It, uh, of course, yung mga focus, yan yung focus ng correctional treatment. Ibig sabihin, may chance pa yung factor na yon na pwedeng mabago. Okay? So, yan yung dynamic risk factors. For example, halimbawa, an offender who has substance abuse issues may be required to attend a substance abuse program. Ibig sabihin, meron mga programs in place na pwede niyang uh, puntahan or mag, doon siya mag-attend para, of course, uh, ma-change pa or ma-address pa yung issues na yon yung mga specific criminogenic needs na tinatawag natin. Kasi nga, meron pa yung pag-asa. Yan yung dynamic risk factor. Sir, pawala-wala po signal ko. Ah, sige lang, ah, meron namang recording. Okay, so the example of dynamic risk factors class, of course, yung lack of literacy skills, kailangan niya lang mag-aral. Anti-social skills, dapat niya lang i-convince siya na makipaghalubilo din siya sa iba. The lack of job skills, of course, turuan siya yung agriculture, yung industrial, and so on. For conflict resolution skills, ibig sabihin, yung substance abuse, yung poverty, and family or marital issues. So, ipaparealize sa kanyang class na dapat niyang ma-change uh, ma yung ganon na factor. Okay, so we have the risk and responsibility model class. It was formally introduced in 1990 to evaluate the offender risk factors and criminogenic needs. Okay, so hindi na natin yan explain further. So yeah, so hindi naman sila nagpo-focus more on the uh, theory. Okay, so we have, uh, wag, wag na natin yan. Okay, dito tayo class, very important kasi to. So the PC hierarchical structure in the PPA or DOJ or yung tinatawag natin na non-residential community-based rehabilitation program na sinasabi natin. Of course, under the uh, Republic Act 10.575, of course, the general welfare and safeguarding of the basic rights of every prisoners and so on. And yan yung tinatawag natin under sa UNSMRTP. Okay. So this is the basic structure of, uh, of some residential PC facilities in states and perhaps some private residential facilities in the Philippines reflecting the real facility setup. Ang director, yan yung tinatawag natin class, the actual head. Okay, the actual head or chief of the residential facility. Ang assistant director naman, siya yung uh, nag-assist. Of course, sa director natin, maybe in the the, uh, the AD or the uh, admin, of course, for, the, uh, for admin and of course, yung tinatawag natin operation. Then ang departments, ito the actual setup of the residential facility. Tatulay yan, director, assistant director, and the departments. Okay. So, depending on the extent of the facility class or the scope of its program, the hierarchical structure may vary to include other services such as administrative, finance naman, medical, special services, and etc. Okay. So, the bottom line, yung number three, the hierarchical structure of the TC facility is one that suits its particular needs and uh, clientele. Of course, yan yung... Uh, to suit with the day-to-day -day operation and program implementation. Of course, it was introduced during the TC conducted by DAPAP International in the Philippines in uh, 1998 to 2004. Okay, so wag na natin yan yan. So of course, na-adapt na yan ng uh, PPA or the Parole Probation Administration and of course, the Department of uh, Justice. Of course, uh, yung uh, particular feedback, mayroong confusion over different staff position and of course, yung actual setup of the field offices. So, parang hindi siya effective. Okay. Uh, wag na natin siguro to ano, kasi very ano naman to. Uh, very broad. Okay, so dito tayo class sa, ano, sa hierarchical structure or alternative that was approved on December 4, 2012. Of course, uh, ito yung ano natin. So, yung, yung name or yung TC family, yung chief, and others, so on dito. So, hindi na tayo mag, ano, dito, mag more on detail dito. So, ito lang yung structure natin, class. Okay, so the BPPO or the, the Parole and Probation Officer or the BPA, the Volunteer Probation Aids na tinatawag natin, of course, sa baba, and so on. 
Okay, so dito tayo class, very important to ito lumabas actually ata sa last uh, board exam ng August, yung therapeutic community program or yung mga behavioral shaping tools natin. Okay, so of course, meron tayong uh, in, uh, in Filipino kasi we are in the Philippines. Di ano to class ha, ito mismo yung nalagay. So ito yung mga pamamaraan na gagamitin upang ituwid ang pagkilos or ugali na lumalaban sa mga alituntunin ng PC program or yung tinatawag natin na behavior shaping tools, di ba? Ang taas ng explanation in Filipino pero in English, yan lang, behavior shaping tools. Okay, so we have the behavior shaping tools class na tinatawag natin. Of course, number one, we have the banishment. Ang banishment, so nakalagay dyan, pagtiwa, pagtiwalang ng kasapi or pagtiwalang ng kasapi mula sa TC family, sanhi ng dulot, nang kabigo ang baguhin ang ugali na taliwa sa pamantayan ng TC family. Okay? So banishment din sabihin nagtiwalag siya. Okay? So yan yung uh, tinatawag natin na uh, sorry, uh, pagtiwalang. Sorry, mahina talaga ako sa Pilipino eh. <laughs> Mula sa TC family, ibig sabihin meron uh, uh, pinagkatiwala niya yung sarili niya class uh, para magbago yung uh, ugali niya or yung overall uh, behavior niya or attitude niya. Yun yung tanatawag natin ng banishment. Okay. Second, so we have the general meeting. Okay? Yun yun, yung pagbabago sa gawain, graduation, promotion, birthday, anniversaries. Ayan, ang nakatandang miyembro ay pinapagalitan ng family at inihiwalay ang kasapi na nagdudulot ng kamalian sa, uh, or paghihirap sa buong therapeutic community. Ibig sabihin, Uh, of course, parang pamilya rin class kasi tawag rin sa therapeutic community natin or therapeutic uh, community family. So yan, parang ano rin siya, parang uh, pamilyang Pilipino talaga ang therapeutic community class. Okay, so we have the bans and containment or yung existent without use. Gumagamit upang ipahiwatig ang isang lumalalang o gali. Ibig sabihin, i-determine nila ngayon class kung ano yung particular na ugali para malaman nila kung ano yung magiging uh, solution nun. So ito, ito ay tinitugunan ng pagpataw ng parusa na kung saan ng kasala ay hindi pinapayagang makibahagi sa magagawain ng TC family. So ibig sabihin parang na-demote siya or um, tawag nito, na-suspended. Yan yung bans, okay? Uncontainment existent without use. Okay, so yan. Okay, ang learning experience naman class, pinapalakas ang kamalayan sa ugnayan ng ugali at epekto ng ating ginagawa. So meaning, uh, in every uh, challenges doon under the therapeutic community, dapat may natututunan siya. May learning siya na ma makukuha niya on how to improve on the next or later on. So yan yung learning experience na tinatawag natin. Of course, yung verbal haircut. I mean, hindi yan talaga literal. Ha? Ang verbal haircut, isang pagpahipahiwating na may naganap na hindi ka na nice nais So, ibig sabihin, uh, merong uh, gulo or merong uh, event na nangyari sa loob. Of course, ang kasapi ay bumabalik sa gawain maganda. Isang paraan upang pigilan ang di magandang gawain at uh, turuang kumilos ng maayos. Ito talaga, class, ha? Huwag kayong magtaka bakit Filipino yung in-explain ko sa inyo. Ito kasi talaga yung nilabas ng uh, BUCOR at uh, BGMP. So, hindi ko pwedeng baguhin to kasi under sa last na to, last presentation natin, uh, Filipino talaga. Sabi ko, hindi ba pwedeng i-English to? Eh, hindi, sir. Ganon talaga. So, yon Of course, tandaan nyo lang yung title niya na verbal haircut and so on. So, ang TC community ay dapat magpataw ng parusa laban sa di magandang gawain. So, under the verbal haircut class, of course, verbally lang, orally lang, through words okay so it is a sign na there is a significant event or there is a kumbaga hindi kanais na is na nangyari sa loob ng therapeutic community na makakaapekto sa lahat ng member ng community uh, therapeutic family okay then we have the encounter group na tinatawag natin ang encounter group ito yung pagpapahayag ng mga damdamin na hindi nabigyan daan upang may pahayag kasama sa mga uh, yung mga sama ng loob sa kasama o sa mga gawain. So yung parang encounter group class, lahat ng kasabi ng therapeutic community, uh, of course, uh, may chance sila to voice out yung dam uh, yung dinadamdam nila, to voice out kung ano yung mga um, hindi nila nagustuhan sa kasamahan nila. And of course, yung uh, trabaho sa loob in general. Then of course, yung pull up, okay, yung pull up naman class 
pagpupuna sa kamalian nang di kilala ang mga gumagawa ng paglabag. Okay? So, ayan. Ibig sabihin, fault of one is fault of all. So, ayan. Pagpuna sa kamalian, nang di kilala ang gumawa ng paglabag. So, yan yung pull up na sinasabi natin. Then, of course, we have what we call the talk to. Okay? Pagpapayo or pagpapala. Okay? So, yan yung talk to. Ibig sabihin, binibigyan nila natin sila ng advices para kung ha, paano ma-improve yung kanilang mga sarili. Okay. So, ang purpose ng morning meeting class, okay, meron tayong tinatawag class na morning meeting. Ang purpose nito class sa therapeutic community is to, uh, before mag-start ang araw nila, to uh, demonstrate yung common concern natin para ma-solve yung immediate logistical problems, appointment, jobs needing attention, and of course, enhance the sense of community. So, meaning, may pagpupulong muna na nagagawa under the morning meeting. Okay? So, it varied length according to the house and needs. Okay? So, yan yung morning meeting na sinasabi natin. Of course, uh, ayan. So, yung pull up, kanina na-explain na natin. Okay? So, address no individual or group behavior. Uh, format to pull up board. Okay? So, yan. And community concern. So, ito yung morning uh, meeting format class natin class. Before mag-start yung araw nila. So, observance of their... Uh, values, responsible concerns, honesty, trust, and responsibility. So it encourages elaboration on the pull-up matters to be given by other members of the community, uh, demand awareness and identification of negative behavior, statement or expected behavior and commitment to change, wala rin criticism, acknowledgement, recognition of good deeds, help given appreciation for good efforts done by co-members of the community, So basically class, magbi-meeting talaga sila under sa morning meeting. I-appreciate ngayon yung gumawa ng mga tama o i-appreciate or pagsasabihan yung mga nakagawa ng mali or i-encourage sila na gandahan nila yung gawain nila or gandahan nila yung ugali nila on the next time. Of course, yan yung tanatawag natin na morning meeting format. Okay? So very important yan class. Okay. So uh, under sa meeting format class, before lang mag-start yung tanatawag natin na araw, wala naman naka-specify class ang uh, under the morning meeting. So parang ano lang, nasa ano siguro, nasa 30 minutes yung uh, minimum, uh, 30 minutes to 1 hour. Kung depende kung may major problem na dapat nilang ma ano, ma-inform ma lahat or uh, kailangan nilang ma ma pa, ano yun, ma-settle before mag-start yung uh, tinatawag natin yung araw nila. Okay. Ay, lumabas sa backboard ninyo. Sige, titingnan natin. I-ano natin sa view 4 or the BGMB kung ilang hours. Ano yung sinagot mo doon? Okay. So, ideal 1 hour. So, 30 to 1 hour. Pre-morning meeting uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, ayan yung morning meeting format natin. Yung team of the day. So the team of the day should sum up the mood and issues that were revealed in the morning meeting. Yung local international news, uh, make it fun and lively, make it personal commentaries. Of course, yung sports, a weather forecast, uh, add humor and make it interesting, humor stories, uh, emphasis on mood, um, undercurrent or hidden emotion rather than uh, greetings. Then of course, yung tanatawag, uh, sabi ng probation officer, 45 minutes daw sa manual nila. Okay, so ayan, 45 minutes yung uh, ano natin, yung ideal. So alam nyo na class, ha? 45 minutes yung ideal. Siguro mag, uh, ano siya, depende sa question kung ano yung itatanong niya. Then of course, yung progress observation natin. Okay, so doon lang mag-end yung uh, discussion natin class sa therapeutic modalities. Again, mamaya, uh, after, before kayo matulog, so i- uh, yung recorded natin o yung recorded natin so panoorin niyo ulit para mabigyan kayo ng overall view or the overall na ano talaga maritain sa utak niyo so ibibigay ko yung powerpoint na to doon rin sa tinatawag natin na Telegram class ah uh, do not um, share it with others kasi uh, ano to uh, sa atin to here sa akin so para